Okay, you guys, we're here with our defensive coordinator, Peter Sermon. Go ahead, if you have questions for Coach Sermon, go ahead and let me know in the chat. I'll call upon you, and we'll get rolling. Go ahead and get started with uh, Jake Curtis from Cal Sports Report. Yeah, can you talk about Trey Pastor's uh, situation in terms of his improvement at uh, linebacker? And do you think he'll get significant playing time next fall? Trey's doing a really nice job in the meeting room on the field. Um, you know, we've talked about guys moving forward in the defense. Things happen quite a bit faster. Um, he's made significant improvement with his eyes just in these, uh, you know, the first six practices that we've had. He's uh, very excited about the, the position change because I think it's going to fit him and his skills the, the very best. Uh, playing time will be determined by, you know, how he continues to develop, Jake. So uh, I think he has every opportunity to, to compete for significant playing time. But, you know, a lot of that is determined by um, the willingness to learn, you know, the good fortune of staying healthy and, and some other factors that uh, can and cannot be controlled. Okay, we'll move to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, morning, Coach. Want to good ask morning. about your uh, two your other inside linebackers who played significantly last year, and Evan Tattersall and uh, Mo Sefa. How are they developing with more reps this spring? You know, Mo has made uh, significant strides. You know, he was uh, with the abbreviated camp. There wasn't the uh, the same amount of detail that we were able to get in um, with lacks lacking of some of the reps and some of the team settings due to some of the restrictions. So Mo's uh, made some big strides here in the first five six practices, and I think he continue uh, he'll continue to do that. He's a, a very instinctual player. I call him slippery. Sometimes he can slip some blocks and and uh, he can get get through some tight spaces. So uh, I'm excited about his future and, and what he's doing. Uh, Evan Tattersall, uh, as in the most experienced player that we have, he is still showing uh, really good signs of improvement, which is great as players get older and more experienced in the in the defense and in the techniques to still see that that level and that room to continue to improve. Uh, Evan has really dedicated himself in the weight room. Um, he's very talented athletically and he's playing really strong. And, and I'm uh, I'm really proud of him for how he's uh he's worked and how he's applied himself and, and, uh, you know, we're continuing to see him get better. Does their development and maybe the depth that you guys have recruited at the inside linebacker position, did that make you feel more comfortable moving coin to outside linebacker though? I know he's going to play some inside still. Yes. You know, these, uh, none of these decisions are made in a vacuum. Um, you know, the way we make our decisions is it's really trying to identify uh, first, what the player's abilities are, and then the strengths of, and weaknesses of certain positions. And if we have deficiencies, like any like any coach, uh, how do you how do you minimize deficiencies and, and maximize what the guys are able to do? Um, I feel very comfortable with who we've recruited and what we've recruited at the inside linebacker position. And now it's time for those guys to uh, show the development and and uh, go out in there and play more meaningful times. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll uh, move on to David Bush from Barron Center. Yeah, good morning, Coach. Um, the the safeties, uh, you've got uh, quite a bit of uh, experience returning, and how are the younger guys uh, working in, and do you see any of them uh, making some dents into the depth chart? You know, this is very similar to, to Trey's, you know, Trey Pastor. Uh, you know, the... The depth chart will be determined uh, by some good fortune on, you know, staying healthy and, and then the opportunity for those guys to show improvement. Uh, but you are right, you know, with Elijah, um, Craig and Daniel, you know, those guys have, um, you know, a pretty good amount of experience, especially uh, Elijah and Daniel. They've been here for several years. Uh, Craig Woodson is a player that we feel really good about and he has every opportunity to, to you know, find more playing time than he did even last year. Uh, the addition of uh, Ray Woody, you know, it's fun to watch him get involved in things. It is, uh, uh, as, a, as a transfer, he's still new to us. So there's a significant learning curve in terms of the vocabulary, uh, some of the ways and the techniques that we play. Uh, Hunter Barth, 
is out there uh, getting some reps. And I'm uh, you know, really optimistic about what Hunter's gonna be. He's very mindful. He's got a really good skills. He's uh, you know, a lot bigger than, than really I anticipated. He's got good length. Uh, he runs well, and then Dwan Butler is uh, you know another player that you know we originally uh, recruited as a as a corner, and we've transitioned him to that safety position. And the more reps and the more team activities he gets, uh, you know, we will see him improve as well. And do uh, any of them uh, lend themselves more to a free safety or strong safety, or do you guys make even make that distinction? There were times in the past that uh, we kind of made that distinction, um, you know, three years ago, um, three, four years ago with Ashton and Jalen, uh, those guys, in our opinion, had some um, different, different strengths. So there were opportunities to, to uh, game plan of where were they're going to line up in certain formations. Uh, a lot of the time for our, our basic install, we play left and right. That provides the opportunity for, for both safeties to see the pictures and to learn both techniques into the field and into the boundary. Um, right now, that's how we'll play. There's always uh, game plans. And, and as we move people around, you know, in that nickel uh, position, there could be some opportunities for guys to travel together or, or play field and boundary. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Trace Travers. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the defensive line, specifically your nose guard spot. Now that you have guys who have the body type to play there. I know Aaron's out for the spring, but how have Stanley and uh, Ricky Correa done so far through, I guess, six practices here? Well, first thing that you notice uh, when they're on the field is those are two big human beings. Um, and then, uh, you know, I know uh, our emphasis has been getting, you know, people that are, that have greater stature, you know, it's, um, you know, football is a, is a big person game and, and we want to continue to get big on uh, the defensive line However, you know, you still need some of that position versatility. So it's not a, uh, you know, that's not the only prerequisite that we're looking for. But uh, Ricky has, has really done some really nice things. He's flashed. You know, it's good to get him back on the field. Um, you know, there were some uh, instances where he had, you know, a couple, uh, a couple dings where he wasn't able on the field in the fall. But uh, Ricky coming back is really good to see him. He's a, again, he's a big, big guy. Uh, he has really nice feet. And uh, the more reps the, that he gets, I think we'll find opportunities to, to find uh, packages for him to be in there. Stanley, you know, just I was telling him just the other day, he had a great one-on-one -on -one rep and pass rush, you know, and that's, that's exciting to see for, for a player that, you know, kind of plays the interior part of our defensive line to be able to win a one-on-one. -on -one. That was, uh, that you know, that got us really excited. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Jake Curtis, Cal Sports Report. Yeah, Peter, I want to see how bold you are here. Uh, if if you, the season started tomorrow and you're playing a basic 3-4 defense, who would be your four linebacker? Well, as we, you know, the way we walked out on the field today, um, which is not where we're going to start. So, uh, you know, the, the outside guys, there's there's going to be some opportunity to, to jockey. You know, I don't think there's any any secret that there's, you know, there's a couple guys that has significant reps, but, um, you know, this is uh, this is a far from a finished product. You know, the, the behavior um, of our players, behavior of how they play and compete will ultimately, you know, dictate, you know, they write the news. I tell them they write it, we report it. So their actions and their behavior and their production will tell us eventually who uh, who's on the field. And, and uh, right now we are not talking about, uh, I heard that the, uh, the schedule was released last week. That sounded like it was exciting. Um, I think we're playing 12 games. So, uh, you know, we really haven't considered uh, who's going to start the first one, but but uh, that will come in due time. So to take a long route, I am not bold enough, Jake. You're not pinning me down on who's going to be the starter on March 5. <laughs> you got to come with a better one than that, then I might be bold. You might say, hey, you don't be bold and tell me what you're having for lunch today. And I probably have a little, eh, I'm not sure if you're going to pin me down, but not for the starting lineup yet. What are you having for lunch? Well, see, I'm not sure. We'll see if chicken pot pie is on the menu. Has anybody talked about Coach Wilcox and what he's got done with the training, with training table? Oh, my gosh. He has worked his tail off along with that admin. And if you guys want to write a story, write a story about 
improvement of how we're taking care of our players and feeding them and treating them uh, as well as we can in terms of uh, nutrition and strength. Coach B has done an awesome job. And Cal Dining is undefeated right now this season. They are kicking. They're, they're, they're making it happen. So I'm all about Cal Dining. All right. I like that. He'll have a good lunch. He'll have a good lunch today for sure. <laughs> if we were, if these guys see this, uh, Jackson, you're you're up next. Good luck, Coach. Just curious if uh, Nate has done anything to catch your eye in these first six practices. You speaking of Rochina? Yes. Yes, he has done some things to catch my eye. Um, anything specifically you like about his skill set with the limited opportunities? I'm sure he's he's had so far. We knew Nate was going to be uh, somebody that was going to develop, you know, watching him at Monta Vista. Uh, he had the ball in his hand a lot. He returned kicks. He played some outside linebacker. He played some safety. Um, you know, he hadn't had the opportunity to play close to the line of scrimmage yet. And, you know, there's not a lot of times, you know, you watch his film that, that uh, you know, the offense was good enough to block him. So these are things that he's going to have to develop. He gets close to the line of scrimmage. Uh, the things that, that we're excited about is, is we think he's a good fit for what he – uh, his personalities and the culture for learning and the culture for, for being a tough guy, uh, you know, and coming every day and tough for us is it exemplifies more than just the physical characteristics, but having the, the mental toughness to come and kind of be the same person every day and, and bring forth uh, the effort that's necessary. So those have all been very positive with Nate. Has his extra time before coming into the program made him any different than the other early enrollees? You know, I think this one, Jackson, is is uh, very unique because of the COVID restrictions for these guys. There wasn't a lot of opportunities for them to get the the typical, uh, you know, the workouts and and be able to utilize those extra three or four months. So uh, that was a that was a definite setback in, in terms of him coming in um, on an, on the delayed enrollment. Thank you. Well, I was going to ask if there was anybody bold enough that was bold enough to have another question, and while I was thinking about that. Trace Travers popped up in the queue, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I worry about Trace now. Now that we're kind of going down this rabbit hole of boldness, he's because as I'm talking, I can see the little giggles, and he's got a he's got a like a you know when you're not supposed to laugh and then something's funnier. That's where Trace is at right now in this whole conversation with all of us sitting here like a Hollywood. It's square. just you know, unexpected. All, you know, all the unexpected stuff. Hollywood squares here. Yeah, Jackson, you're my, you're my, uh, the one right in the middle. I don't know what they call that one, but you're the one that everyone's going to call on. on Hollywood. Center square. Center square. Where yeah. you at, Chris? Uh, you said it last week that the defensive line position is one that you're going to recruit, recruit, recruit. And I want to know how much of an emphasis, especially with the two guys that you got in early and Keeley and uh, Patrick, who's outside linebacker, but still in that same kind of vein, how much of an emphasis there is on just continuing to add length at the position? I think fundamentally in our, you know, in what we recruit to, um, there is not enough big guys in America for, for everybody to be happy uh, in football. Uh, on the West Coast, uh, the guys that, that, have, uh, that have the tools, they become national recruits immediately. Um, it's just is just the, what the D-line position is. Um, to get the guys that you want, I think you're always gonna have to be prepared to take overages in, in that position. Um, you know, there's, you can come in here and look at our recruiting board and, and there's target numbers. Uh, I think target numbers are exactly that, they're targets, but in certain positions, um, the hit rate or, you know, just the, the necessity of the depth to play at championship football, I think is, is really great. You know, I think the, the defensive line position to play championship football, uh, you have to have depth, you have to continue that depth. Um, it's a very physical position and there's gonna be, you know, some, some injuries and guys aren't always gonna be able to participate. So that, that's a position, um, you know, I think that you always have to over recruit your numbers to, to be able to play championship football. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else bold enough? Okay. I think we're good. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Good seeing you guys. Enjoy the weather and uh, be safe and have a, a great weekend. We'll see you.